Good morning, good morning, you guys. So it is Thursday, peak week number one. <sighs> I'm so tired, but it's okay. If you can hear in the background, this is what we do in the mornings is we put on motivational videos first thing. The internet here sucks, but. So that's what we do. First thing in the morning is we get up and we get our mind right. We start talking, thinking about all the good things that can happen during the day and all the possibilities in life. We think about our goals and how we can be better. And this is how to start the day. It's totally how to start the day, you guys. Then I come to the kitchen and I start making lunchy food things, which I will show you in just a minute. So... I always make coffee in my little French press here because I don't have a coffee maker and it's super good. And I found this coffee that is um, seven times more antioxidants than green tea. It's got 70% less acid than other coffees. It's organic and it's pretty yummy. So that's what I'm doing for coffee these days. And over here I'm making some food. I'm going to do some eggs and sausage for the man for breakfast and I'm gonna eat after my cardio in the morning so I'm gonna check in with you in just a couple minutes and um, let you guys know what's going on for the rest of today so this is the lunch bag in the top I have eggs down here we have a Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. This is not for me. This is for the boy. And then we use these these meals from Freshly, and they're like pretty tasty. I'll see. So this one's a southern style almond chicken. It's got like some apples, some cornbread stuff. And it's pretty good. We have our supplements for today. This is his. This is Slippery Elm Bark, Slippery Elm, multivitamin, fish oil, probiotics, B vitamins. We got a D in there. And then we have my breakfast. Coffee and BCAAs and water. I cannot seem to keep my hair under control today. It is crazy. Anyway, it is later in the day. I have done some work on my upcoming podcast with my co-host, Alex Greenberg. I have taken a 45-minute nap. I've eaten ground turkey and broccoli, which is fabulous. Um, a lot of people ask about prep food being boring, but I actually really enjoy it and I would still eat the same things if I wasn't prepping maybe different amounts. I would add some other stuff in, but the food that I eat, I genuinely enjoy. I don't know what it is, but this 99% lean ground turkey, when you cook it up, it gets like dry, like jerky and I really love jerky. So I'm happy when I eat that. Um, what else today? I'm about to start on these dishes because they need to get done. I'm dragging on my duties around the house. Um, and I'm at the point right now in my prep where I am so tired and my brain is not really like functioning as well as it usually does. I'm at the point where I'm just ready to like hire somebody else to come do all of my chores and take care of all the stuff because I just don't want to do anything. All I want to do is go to the gym and sleep. That's it. Anyway, I'll check in with you guys later.
I'm super excited um, because I didn't have to wake up until the crack of dawn. It's like 8, I'm about to go get some breakfast, some oatmeal, take a walk, and then head over and get my first coat of tan. second coat of tan, do the drug test, and then it is showtime. So, some lady just watched me pee in a cup, which is nice, because it means that I'm competing against other people who are natural, and I love it, and I don't have to worry about competing against any steroided folks. <laughs> to do a quick recap of the two shows. The first one was in Oceanside and it was really great. There was a little bit more people there so there was more competition which made it really fun um, and it was really interesting to see the types of things that the judges went for. Um, over the course of the week between the first show and the second show I got some feedback from the judges and they basically said that I rushed my routine, that I wasn't connecting, I maybe I could smile more. So overall, like I kind of just botched my presentation. Um, but it was okay because I learned, you know, you learn every show. And so then when I came back for the second one, for the pro show, I made sure that I was smiling at all times, even when I was facing away from the judges. Um, I just, I relaxed a lot and I had more fun with my routine. I was able to just kind of like let loose a little bit. And, um, and it was really fun and obviously it paid off. Um, my body tightened up a lot over that week. You will be so surprised at how quickly things can change when you're that lean. Um, so overall, I think I did a really good job of peaking and um, making sure that I brought the pe best package that I possibly could to the stage. Um, and so then what's coming up next is a there's a show in Laughlin in September that I'm planning on doing, and then the MPF World Championships in Columbus, Ohio in November. That is going to be awesome. They're holding it at the same place that they have the Arnold, so that'll be really cool to be able to see the venue. Um, and I'm going to hopefully just continue to improve my physique, continue to lean out a little bit because um, the feedback from the judges on the second show Basically, were that I'm pretty great, like symmetrical. I'm pretty great with a lot of, like the way my body is shaped is pretty awesome. I could lose a couple, little bit more weight, just a, like a touch, just tighten up a little bit more, and um, choose some better poses. So we talked about which poses look good on my body and which poses look not so good on my body. And I learned that you know that little booty pop kind of side pose, you can use that for your quarter turns 
during comparisons. So I was trying to do the normal side pose that people do during quarter turns, and it's not very flattering for me, to be honest. It's just not. It exposes all my flaws. So learning that I can stick with the little booty pop side pose was just amazing because it's, well, it's my favorite pose, and it makes me look amazing. It highlights my the definition of my shoulders and my arms, which I worked so hard for. Um, and you know, it just highlights your, your glutes, which I have great glutes. I work on them a lot. So learning that that was, um, available to me as a tool to improve my placing was even better. So I'm super, super excited overall, you guys, it was a really great experience. Both of the shows, um, even though the first show I didn't place as well as I wanted to, I still came back and the promoter at the second show was like, look, this is how you do it. You know, you just, you you don't place how you want to place, but it's fine. You come back with grace, you maintain your dignity and you move on and keep going and you don't give up and it pays off. Um, and it did. So, um, also I wanted to touch on the NPF, you guys, if you don't know about them, it's a natural bodybuilding organization. They do drug testing, um, to maintain, you know, natural people in the organization, they look for a physique that's a little bit more attainable to a normal person. Um, when, like, say, the bikini class first came out, a lot of people jumped on it because they were like, I can do that, you know? And then over time, the girls would become more muscular, they become leaner. It's to the point now where even, like, the bikini class is, like, it's just as difficult to attain that body as it is to attain like a regular, you know, figure, physique body. It's just a different set of tools, different training technique, different diet, but it's just as much work. So what the MPF is looking for is they're looking for a healthy, athletic, toned physique um, that looks good, that looks balanced and symmetrical. Of course, they judge on the same thing everybody judges on bikini as far as presentation, hair and makeup, um, suit choice, all of that stuff is kind of the same. But the body that they're looking for is something, they are not looking for somebody who's super shredded, super dieted down. They want a healthy, well-rounded athletic physique, um, which is what I brought to the stage, which makes me just super happy. So um, if you're considering competing, also the most important thing I think about this is that when you compete with these big federations like and you win, they give you like a trophy and you're like, yay, I won. And you have bragging rights. When you compete with the MPF and you win, they give you money. Like, you get paid. I got, I want my prize money cost more than my entry fees. And for me, like, that's great. I got my beautiful medal. My medal is amazing. It's big. It's gorgeous. It's something I can hang on the wall. It's something I can show people. I got a plaque from the AAU, you know, International Bodybuilding has a nice picture of Vegas on it. Like, those are really, really cool things to have. But you know what? really helps with this sport is the money because it is so expensive between the supplements, the suits, the um, the entry fees, the travel, like it adds up. It's an expensive hobby. It's not a career. It's a hobby. <laughs> Even top level IFBB pros, they don't make money off of competing. They make money off their sponsors, off their, you know, their side hustle, which their competing images are good marketing for, um, but actually competing the prize money that you get as a competitor, it's to help offset the cost of competing because it really can get pretty expensive. So being able to win prize money was phenomenal. And it just really, it makes it, I don't know, it makes it more fun because I'm not stressed about my, my finances. Um, but that's also definitely something to think about if you are considering competing. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how much it costs. There are some ways you can cut corners, but for the most part, the expenses are the expenses and you can't really get around it, unfortunately. Um, what else did I want to say? The more, oh, the MPF, their prize money. You know, the more competitors that join the competition, the bigger the pot is, the more money you win. So a lot of organizations will use money from their sponsors to pay that payout to athletes. This organization rolls the entry fees into the payout. So if you have three people competing, you get like this much money. If you have 10 people competing, you get this much money. If you got 20 competitors in the class, you get like, it just grows and grows and grows. There's no limit to how much money you can win. So the bigger we can build this federation, the better experience is going to be for everybody. It's going to be more competitive, 
the more people compete, obviously, which is going to make it awesome. And not only that, but the chances of getting rewarded to go up. So definitely, if you're considering competing at all, if you're just thinking about getting into it, definitely check out natural organizations, especially the MPF, the Natural Physique, uh, Natural Physique Federation. MPF, Natural Physique Federation. They're awesome. Um, they have lots of shows out in Columbus, Ohio, where they're based, um, but they also have shows in other uh, states, in Vegas, all over. So check them out. And um, I hope to see you at a show. If you have any questions, you know, about like what it took to prep to get this far, what my posing practice looks like, how much it costs, anything else that you have questions on about competing you want to know the answer to, leave me a comment. Send me a direct message, ask me, let me know, and I'll make another video for you so you guys can know. Um, but I really just want to thank, thank, big thanks to everybody who was involved in making this happen for me. It's just been a dream come true. Um, some of you who know my personal story know I got into bodybuilding because of my dad who was sick with cancer. He was a bodybuilder when he was younger. So it gave us something to connect with, something to talk about, something that where he would finally felt proud of me, you know. And so being able to not only make bodybuilding a part of my lifestyle, which has been super incredibly fulfilling, but um, to be able to show up at my first professional show and win it was just like, I know my dad is up there looking down at me and feeling proud. So definitely a lifelong goal accomplished this weekend. And um, I'm just so grateful to everyone who shared it with me. So thank you. And I'll catch you guys later. I'll make you guys more videos. It's really fun. Um, my camera was acting funky, which is why I didn't get more footage, but I'm going to be better. The more I do this, the better I'm going to get at it.